Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this CERT Mike Explains video, I'm going to walk you through an important topic on cybersecurity certification exams, IPSEC. We'll first talk about why we need IPSEC, and then we'll dive into how this important protocol works. Now, to understand the need for IPSEC, we need to go way back in history to the time that the internet was created. All the way back in the 1960s, government researchers and academics needed a way to communicate with each other, so they decided to connect their computers together using a nationwide network. They worked together to build the core of what is now today's internet. Now, they were focused on creating a network where a fairly small group of people, most of whom knew and trusted each other, could communicate about their scientific research. They weren't designing a network that they expected to be used for billions of financial transactions, business video conferences, and the delivery of healthcare. Confidentiality simply wasn't much of a concern because these people all knew and trusted each other. Now, that approach to developing what's become the internet has been a dilemma for cybersecurity professionals ever since. We have a set of protocols that were designed without security in mind, and now we need to retrofit them to add on security capabilities. The Internet Protocol Security, or IPSEC framework, is a set of protocols that are designed to add security capabilities to the original set of TCP IP protocols. Now, unlike Transport Layer Security, TLS, IPSEC reaches deep into the protocol stack and provides security for the entire payload of encrypted communications. IPSEC uses two different protocols to achieve this goal. The Encapsulating Security Payload, or ESP protocol, provides both confidentiality and integrity protection for the payloads of packets. The Authentication Headers, or AH protocol, uses an integrity check value to provide tamper-proofing for IP packets. AH ensures that no changes are made to the payload or the header of a packet while it's in transit over a network. A single communication can combine both ESP and AH to achieve confidentiality for packet payloads in conjunction with integrity verification for the entire packet, including the header. IPSEC uses a concept known as security associations to allow systems to communicate the cipher suites that they support to each other. Each system participating in IPSEC makes available a list of cryptographic protocols and hash functions that it's configured to support. Each of these configurations is known as a security association. Systems that wish to communicate with each other then compare their lists of security associations to find the strongest one that they both have in common, and then the systems communicate using those algorithms. The last topic you need to know about IPSEC as you prepare for your next cybersecurity certification exam is that IPSEC VPNs use two different modes. I'll cover those in a minute, but before I do, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's get back to IPSEC. IPSEC may be used to support virtual private network or VPN connections that use two different modes of operation. First, administrators can create IPSEC tunnels to connect two different sites together. In this approach, the connection is transparent to end users. From the user's perspective, the two networks are connected to each other. However, whenever traffic moves between those two networks, it travels through a tunnel that encrypts the traffic so that it can safely travel over a public network. This use of IPSEC is known as tunnel mode. Second, end users can use IPSEC VPN clients to connect individual computers to a remote network. That use of IPSEC is known as transport mode. 
Now, IPsec VPNs are falling out of favor today in favor of easier to use TLS-based VPNs. That's what you need to know about IPsec when you take your next certification exam. I hope you found this explainer useful. Thanks for watching and subscribe to see more.